All right, everybody, welcome. Come on in. Hopefully we are here and recording and good and live and all of that stuff because I never quite know. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Come on in and get comfortable. We are so excited that you could join us today because you could be anywhere and we're thankful that you're here celebrating with us another episode of The Breakthrough Today. I'd like to invite you to take a minute, click the love button, click the share button so that more people can join us today. And trust me when I tell you, this is an episode so that everybody on this planet is going to need to hear. So click that share button. We would really, really appreciate it. And I know everybody joining in and getting to watch the show today is going to appreciate it as well. My name is Jessica Dugas. I'm an intuitive mentor and energy healer. And my name is Donna Brown, and you may want to have Kleenexes. Just, just saying. And I am a holistic wellness practitioner, and this is The Breakthrough. It's a spiritual view for your soul and mind where we dig deep on today's spiritual hot topics and inspire you with stories of those breakthrough moments that will change our lives. It is going to be a great show today because how many of you are someone or know someone who has ever been diagnosed with cancer or another major medical illness. To, on today's show, we have our friend Cindy Trost, who is a client attraction coach, but she's also a cancer survivor. She's going to be sharing with us her breakthrough moment in finding the positive in surviving cancer. Okay. This is what I mean. This is going to be something that people are not going to want to miss. It's truly going to be an amazing show. So hit that share button again, if you haven't done so already. But first, we have to get started with today's hot topics, which means it's time to welcome our panelists today. Today we have Mr. Empowerment himself. We have our empowerment coach. He is amazing. Everybody, please welcome Jamad Kelly to the show today. He's coming. He's coming. And I can't see his video, but hopefully he'll click that button. There he is. There he is. <laughs> And we also have our juicy conversationalist. She's a meditation teacher, designer, photographer, our Jane of all things, helping us to stay grounded and peaceful during our um, breakthrough moments. Everybody, please welcome the fabulous Tara Abram to the show today. She's coming. She's coming too. There she is. Yay. Hi. We're so excited to have you guys on today. Donna, what are we talking about for hot topics? So today we are talking about, you know, I was going to tell you guys earlier, sorry. Today we are talking about, it's really going to be a hot topic. <laughs> you ask for help, but are you ready for it? And you know where this hot topic came from. So Jamad actually posted an image of a little cat sitting in a window little cat sitting in the window and on this image the cat said i'm so lonely i just want somebody to be my friend something i'm paraphrasing now but he just i'm so lonely and then someone comes up to pet, pet him and he's like don't touch me <laughs> <laughs> so i'm the cat no i'm okay <laughs> now, I mean, how many times it, it just it really inspired me for a minute because it, it made me think about how many times we'll complain and we'll moan about something and we want something so bad. And then when we get it, it's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I don't want that anymore. I don't want it now. <laughs> I, it, I mean, this ties in so beautifully to when we were talking about um, a while back to being the fixer. And talking, you know, having that discernment of whether or not someone wants to be fixed or wants our help, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so it's interesting because I, it, it, through that very funny cat graphic, I noticed myself too. And I think that's, that can be a, um, an Aquarius trait too, Jamad. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Jamad has no comment. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, Donna? Well, you know, I'm right, I'm right with you. I think that sometimes there are times when I think I want help or I think I want something. And then, like you said, then it gets here and it's like, oh, because it may not be what you want or maybe it's not the person you want or the thing that you want or the situation that you want. Instead of looking at the bigger picture of, 
okay, I'm getting some help. I've been asking. The universe is now listening to me and sending it to me. And then I just shove it away. So I'm trying, personally, I'm trying to get so much better that when I'm asking out the universe for help, that whatever comes my way, I receive it with much more love. But that's hard sometimes. <laughs> so, but what about you, Tara? Do you ever ask for help and then aren't ready for it? You know, it's funny. Um, how, I think through my journey, it's funny how I've realized how oftentimes myself and in other people um, just aren't open to receiving. It's, you know, people are so willing sometimes to say, hey, I'll help you with this and that. And you, you, you just go, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. So yeah, definitely. I mean, I've come across that a lot in my experience. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a tricky thing when you're trying to manifest and you're trying to bring things in sometimes because all of a sudden they will show up and it's like, and you have to take that next, like, push mm -hmm. forward and go. And it's like, what is that block? Or what is that barrier? What is that thing that's making me not go for what exactly what I wanted when it's right in front of me? So mm -hmm. that's, that's, it's going to be an interesting conversation here. Yeah. And it's funny that you said open to receive because that's very, very true. As, as, mm -hmm. as a people pleaser and a fixer, I want to be the one giving. I'm not really good at receiving a lot of times. So it's really funny that you mentioned that because that's something I've been working on for the past two weeks is trying to be a better receiver and letting mm -hmm. people help me as much as I help them. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so I think that's, what about you, Jamad? How are you at receiving? Um, oh, yeah. So, you know, the last time I was on here, I was telling all of y'all how my lesson was pretty much all about how to receive and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, during the first portion of my spiritual journey, actually, y'all, I've been on break for like a minute. And this time, I think I was really ready for the help that I received. I finally got to a place where I've been in the same place for almost a month now. It's mm -hmm. been quiet. It's been chill. But I said all that to say this, like, a lot of my journey, I had to learn how to appreciate what I have. But in a lot of appreciating what I have, I think I was able to appreciate people a little bit more to open up to receive from them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, I really appreciate my friends at this time. And oh, I'm allowing my friends to do such great and nice things for me. Currently, mm -hmm. I'm in Atlanta. I've been hiding out. Y'all are the first to know nationally where I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, too, because... Um, so talk about synchronicity. My father actually made a post yesterday that said, thought for the day, don't pray for something unless you're ready to receive it. Mm -hmm. And so, and I had commented on there, um, on his post. And how funny is it that we're commenting on our parents' posts on Facebook? That's just really weird. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> whoever thought we would be here, I don't know. Um, but uh, it's, I, I commented on there that it has to do too, I think with, with expectations for things. Um, and Heather was commenting when our other shout out to Heather, our other beautiful, Hi, Heather. um, she was commenting, it may not be what you want, but more so what you need. So I think mm -hmm. sometimes we get caught up in that expectation too, of like, I know I've talked to some people who will he'll say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm praying or I'm manifesting um, in, in, in the area of, of finances, right? And they don't get that, that you know, uh, more money in their job and they don't get, uh, you know, higher money coming in, but suddenly they'll get someone that gives them something mm -hmm. or they'll get someone that's going to relieve them of some of their time, which ends up saving them money. So it's like, you have to kind of understand that sometimes God or the universe is going to give you things in ways that you're not quite expecting. And so when you pray for relief for something or you're trying to manifest something, you have to be open to the, the possibility that it could come in lots of different ways, not just what's in your head. Mm -hmm. And I think, Jamad, I know you were talking about too, um, some of the different trips that you've taken, like that have just kind of come together, right? And you've gotten things in different ways. It hasn't been like you had this perfectly planned out trip from A to Z. Things have just kind of come together, right? 
Never. And that's one thing I was telling somebody, somebody the other night that I have realized that the universe is always two steps ahead of you. Like mm -hmm. when I was like, oh, how is this going to work out? And then I would realize once it worked out that these pieces was coming together the entire time. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, oh, the universe is always two steps ahead of me. That's so dope. Right. But mm -hmm. here's the here's one thing that I did want to say, like you were talking about how some people say be careful, you know, what you what ask, you know, make sure you're ready for it, right? So I was thinking to myself, I had made a status before we had did today's show, and I was like, be careful what you wish for and forget. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the things that are going on in my life right now are old wishes that I'm sitting there <laughs> like, oh, I wish I would have wrote this down somewhere. I wrote <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we should have a wish book keeping up with all our wishes because when sometimes when they manifest we will greet them just like they're a complete stranger right mm -hmm. but this is something we really really wanted at a time at one point in time so yeah I'm not yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. A, that's the thing of releasing expectations of the timing of things too. Mm -hmm. um, I, am, I, I joked the whole time, and Tara can tell you, the whole time that Tara and I were waiting for our book launch, and the whole time I kept making these, these comments on posts in our author group saying, I think I'm here in this life to learn patience. <laughs> like, I, I think, think that's what I'm being taught because it's it's like we want we we especially nowadays everything is so right right here right now as soon as we I mean we have such instant gratification on everything that I think that we come to expect that a little bit we come to be like well why isn't this happening now or you know I've been on such a, a powerful physical healing journey that I have to constantly remind myself, Jessica, it took you 37 years to get to the point of where you're at. How are you going to expect, you know, just this immediate shift? Not to say it can't happen, but, but the expectation of, that I put on myself, you know, is not, is not a good one. And we have to be careful of that. Um, uh, anybody have any other final thoughts about this, uh, this idea of, well, you know, Jessica, just to further what you said, I think a lot of that comes from how we've been conditioned over the years because things just happen so much quicker. Like, you know, we used to send letters in the mail and then it went to email and now it's like instant messages. Like, so it's kind of just the way I think that we've moved. So we, we forget that things need to take time to, you know, grow and to manifest and to evolve kind of things. So you're, you're, you know, I agree with what you're saying. <laughs> it's, we, we just expect things to happen immediately, instantly. Yeah. So I think the universe uses that to give us uh, time to learn patience. So the universe mm -hmm. goes, okay, you don't have it in your everyday life anymore. So now we're just going to kind of make these things happen. <laughs> we all, I'm just kidding, guys. But, but it does kind of <laughs> make you wonder sometimes, you know, because it's like somewhere we've got to realize this instant gratification is not the way of life. It, it's the way of our life, but look how stressed out everybody seems to be right now because of the, I've messaged you, you need to message me right back kind of thing. And it's like, you know, so I do think it's a way to kind of step back and, and learn patience and learn to not be so instant, instant. Everything's got to be now. Yeah, things are very different since that rotary phone. <laughs> <laughs> to make I a phone to call. Uh, when you <laughs> have to use the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I personally miss when someone ticks you off being able to slam that phone. <laughs> we don't have that with cell phone anymore. <laughs> no slamming. <laughs> I would like to finish this conversation today by just encouraging everybody too that if you need help in your life, if you need something, just ask for it when you're ready to receive it. There's a lot of people out there like all of us on the on the panel on the panel today that are always ready and willing to help but you know don't say you want help unless you're ready for us to step up because we will step up so just watch out now <laughs> all right guys we have to welcome our special guest to the show today I want to um, encourage you again, if you have not shared this episode out, share this episode out. This is one that everybody needs to hear today. 
Um, I want to welcome our guest. She's a client attraction coach specializing in the law of attraction and the emotion code. And she's also, as I mentioned, a cancer survivor. Everybody, please welcome to the show today, Miss Cindy Trost. We are so excited to have you here. Hey. Yay. I'm going to unmute you, Cindy. I, Cindy, I'm. you and I had connected um, a, a little while ago now. I mean, it's been... Mm -hmm. It's been a minute or two, um, and I was immediately inspired by your story, so I'm really excited to have you on today, and um, I'd love to start by asking you what your thoughts are on our hot topic today about being ready to receive. Do you find that um, you come in contact with people like that, that are that ask things, or maybe that's you sometimes, too? Are you always ready to receive? I think it's a perfect hot topic for what we're going to talk about with the cancer experience, because it's so interesting what our society tells us is true about cancer and what we should expect about cancer. And so I kind of turned that on its head, but I find that when encountering other cancer patients or survivors, sometimes they're like, well, yeah, but it's supposed to be this way. This is what I'm supposed to get from cancer. And they're not always open to saying, hey, cancer can be another way. You can receive something else from cancer than what you're thinking you're going to receive from cancer. So I think it was a perfect topic. Awesome. I think it ties right. I, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. We're just going to move on. <laughs> I say it every week, the synchronicity of things. I'm not doing it today. <laughs> um, but Cindy, I'd love for you to start um, and take us back to um, what things were like for you around the time of, um, or even, even before di before your cancer diagnosis, um, were you a positive person in general? How, what was your, what was different about you then? I was a positive person, but this was back in 2016 when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I have to say that I was not practicing everything that I preach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was pretty stressed out. I was working too much. I was not doing the best as far as self-care goes. And so even though I'm, I try to be super positive, I was having a lot of negative thoughts and some negative expectations. And I just wasn't managing things as well as I could have been. So when I received my diagnosis, I actually wasn't that surprised. It was still a shock, but I wasn't overly surprised that it happened. And what was your, um, when you got that, when you heard that C word, uh, even though it, you weren't surprised, what were some of the things that you were experiencing in, 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 in across the board, like emotionally, physically, like what, what were you dealing with at that time? Yeah. You know, when your doctor tells you, well, you have cancer, your whole world just starts spinning. I mean, everything is different in that second. And I think I went through what is pretty typical initially. I, I left my doctor's office and I went out to the parking lot and I just burst into tears. I got in my car and I just cried and it was the ugly cry. I mean, it was, you know, like really crying. I was yelling. I was cursing. I was like, what the hell? I mean, how could this happen to me? Even though in the back of my head, it's like, mm -hmm, not so surprised that you attracted this, but you know, I was obviously really upset. And I, that went on for like 30 minutes. I mean, I was in my car, just giving it my all, crying my eyes out and just going through all that kind of shock that you go through when somebody says, hey, you have a disease that could potentially kill you. So I did that, but I did that for 30 minutes. And as you mentioned, um, Jessica, I'm a law of attraction trainer, facilitator. I, I teach law of attraction. I live law of attraction. So I thought, okay, hold on just a minute. This is so not law of attraction to be doing this. And the key thing that I want people to take away from this first part of my journey is after 30 minutes of crying and screaming and swearing and why me and all that, I made a decision 
And that's really the key point. I made a decision. I decided that I'm not going to go through cancer like this. So I accepted that, okay, this has come into my life. This is something that I'm going to have to deal with now. And I'm going to do it in a positive way. All of the cultural and media and, you know, all the stuff that we hear from everybody about, oh my God, cancer is like the worst thing. You know, it's, it's just the most terrible thing that could happen to you. It's awful. It's going to be a really bad experience. That's not the law of attraction way to live life. So I just decided after 30 minutes of crying and going crazy that I was going to do cancer in a law of attraction kind of way. I want to, I want to interject for just one second about, about bringing the law of attraction into this, because it's really interesting in conversations that I've had with people before who, um, who don't really understand the law of attraction or they don't, um, they, it's very difficult for them to buy into the fact that they could have attracted something like cancer into their lives. Mm -hmm. um, it's th th that is a very, very difficult conversation to have with people, especially people who have lost someone from cancer or right. other things like that. They, they immediately, that defense comes in and it's like, well, how, they wouldn't pick this. Why, you know, what do you say to people who, um, who, who respond in that, in that way? Yeah, and that's, that's super common and understandable. Absolutely. And, you know, I respect every person's belief. So my belief is that what I put out, I get back. And no, I wouldn't have picked cancer either. But cancer is just what showed up because of my predominant vibe, or what I was sending out, as I mentioned, it was a pretty stressful year. And I was not having the best, most positive thoughts. So in my belief, it's like, yeah, I'm not surprised that this came into my life. I was made myself kind of vulnerable to it by what I was thinking, how I was behaving, how I was treating myself. But, you know, I respect someone's belief if they believe that that's not how it happens. I'm cool with that. I think that every person has to deal with this in the way that is best for them. And I don't say to people, hey, you attracted that in a, in a guilt kind of way. It's more just an awareness, you know, that, hey, you, you have some control in your life. You know, if you want to make your life better, there's things that you can do. And I never, I don't go back and say, oh my God, God, how, how did, how did I do this? Why did I do this? What happened? You know, I don't do that anymore because I don't really care. It's like, okay, this thing has showed up. I need to deal with it and I need to do it in a positive way. And I move forward. I don't spend a lot of time going back, trying to figure out why, because then I'm going into negative energy. I hope that makes sense. Yes, no, that makes perfect sense. I was actually, that was going to be my question. And so you went right on into it. <laughs> so that was great. Um, coming from working with energy as well. Um, so I'm going to take you back to the beginning of your statement when you, when you got that diagnosis and you were told that you had cancer and you went out into the, and you went out to your car to leave um, and you had your quote unquote meltdown, we'll call mm -hmm. um, would you say that through that whole process that that helped you, it gave you the um, release that you needed to help you be able to get into a more positive energy mindset at that point? Because oh, I think sure. people need to understand that it's okay to have that mental breakdown Oh yeah, because you, you need it for reasons. So that's kind of where I was trying to go with that question. Yeah, absolutely. It, it definitely helped me because I'm not Pollyanna. You know, I don't put on rose colored glasses and go, hey, everything is beautiful immediately. You know, I think as a human, we have a range of emotions that we experience and that's perfectly normal. But from a law of attraction perspective, I try to experience negativity very briefly. So I think it's totally normal. I think it's a good thing to absolutely get that out because it's a very charged situation you're kind of overcome with all these emotions when someone tells you that you have cancer so 
in the moment and, and in the few moments, hours, days, maybe even after you get that, you need to process that and not just stuff it and pretend like everything is okay. I wasn't going to pretend like everything is okay. You know, I needed to get that out and be mad and whatever, but I want to do it briefly. And I think that's the key that that's not the energy you want to stay stuck in. Yeah, I love, I love that you said that because it's it's true when we talk about manifesting and things like we, we, need, we need to come from a place of joy, but there's also that um, releasing those emotions and allowing them to move through you and feeling them, like you say, so that you don't stuff them down and they get stuck within you and then they're and then they're there. And that's a lot of what the motion code talks about. Totally. Um, yeah. Is it, you know, and being able to move that through you. So I love that you said that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the key is to have some strategies. So when you experience any kind of contrast or challenge in your life, it's good to have some strategies to say, okay, this has shown up. I'm going to deal with it. What's my strategy? And my very first strategy while I was still sitting in the car in my parking lot, in the parking lot with my makeup running down my face and looking not so good. Um, my first thing was I have to have a mantra that's going to get me through this experience. And the one that came to my head immediately was this is going to be easy. And how I, how that came to me was as I was sitting there crying and, and doing all that, I, all these images were going through my head of everything I had heard about breast cancer, other people who had had breast cancer, um, all the difficulty, all the pain, you know, all those kinds of things. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't really want that. What do I want? If I could have what I want in this breast ca cancer experience, what is that? And I thought, hmm, everybody says it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be, it's just going to suck in a big, big way. And I thought, okay, the opposite of that is I want it to be easy. So that was my mantra for my entire breast cancer experience. And it was amazing how much having a mantra like that helped me. And that wasn't the only mantra that I had, but that was kind of the overarching mantra that no matter what I did, no matter who I interacted with, hey, this is going to be easy. That was what my attitude was. I keep seeing Jamad clapping and nodding and everything else over there because Jamad is a law of attraction master too. And so I, I'd love to hear you jump in Jamad and, and uh, chat with Cindy. Cause I know that you guys are like peas and carrots here. <laughs> Y'all I'm sitting here. I don't know if I'm teary eyed or what, but I almost thought that Cindy was the love of my life. Okay. Woo. Okay. So Cindy, I do want to ask a question and you kind of started to touch on it. Um, just, just really in, I don't know how, somehow I think she's quite intuitive. She starts to answer our questions before we even get to ask them. Right. So I have my best friend here in Atlanta is a doctor, a chiropractor. And like, he's really into this thought or uh, this very strong belief or knowledge that, you know, when you align the spine with the universe, you mm. get to that re resistance and release those toxins that are being stored up in the physical body, right? So I want to ask, because you said instantly, you just knew in an intuitive way, or just through guidance to have a mantra to get you through this. What were some other changes that you may have made or decided to make or felt lead to make um, that really made a positive impact on this journey for you? What changes? Maybe you saw a chiropractor, maybe you saw an energy healer. I want to know the, the juice. Yeah, I definitely did do things like that. I um, started working with an emotion code practitioner. And for anyone who's not familiar with emotion code, that is a type of energy healing. And that process helped me so much that then I actually became certified myself as an emotion code healer because I was just so impressed with how it helped me get through breast cancer. But I also um, went to an acupuncturist. I regularly had acupuncture during my um, whole treatment experience. And I'll tell you, this is, this is kind of funny. 
or at least I, I laugh when I think about how I did this, but I'm a crystal girl. I got my crystals going on there. I carry them with me. And so that was um, a big part of it too. And the funny part was that, of course, when you, when you have breast cancer, you have to go in for a lot of treatment. You see a lot of different professionals. So one of the things that I did, Jamad, was I had to go to the, the cancer treatment center. And, you know, when you go in there, the waiting room is filled with people in all stages of cancer, of treatment and all of that. And I'm super sensitive to energy. So I, the first time I walked in and I was like, holy cow, the energy in here is really not what I want to be immersed in. So I had my crystals with me. And so I went to the front desk and, you know, registered and all that. And then I'm like, okay, I sat down and I've got crystals in my pocket and in my purse and uh, people are talking about their treatment and how painful and how bad. And I'm like, oh my God, I cannot sit here. So I went to the bathroom and I'm in the bathroom and I'm like, okay, with my crystals, you know, I'm clearing all this energy. Oh my God, it was so funny. And and so then from then on, every time I went to the treatment center and I had to go very, very often, but every time I went, I would sit in the parking lot and I would meditate. I would hold my crystals and I would go in like one minute before my appointment time. I would just go into the front desk. I wouldn't sit down in the lobby. I would check in and I would say, you know, how, how's the doctor doing on her schedule? Is she on time? Is she behind? And if she was at all like running late, I'd be like, okay, well, I'm just gonna, I, I just need to go to the restroom. <laughs> so I would sit in the bathroom for the whole time, like for 10 minutes. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna go out and see if they're ready for me yet. But it was one of those protective things that I did. I was like, I am not gonna be in any energy that isn't beneficial to me. So I'm sure, you know, after a while, the nurses were like, what is she doing in there? <laughs> but I'm in there clearing with my crystals and doing protection and stuff like that. So yeah, I, you know, I always have been a crystal person, but I didn't always use them all the time. And I mean, I'm not kidding you. My crystals went with me throughout my breast cancer journey. They were with me constantly. They were my best friend. It was, it was great. But if anybody knew I was in the bathroom waving my crystals around, I'm sure they would have laughed. But I will say, but they weren't. No, they, they weren't. weren't enjoying you, right? They was like, you know what? I'll try anything because I want to yeah. do the poll. Like everybody, who takes their crystals everywhere? Leave it in the comments. I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was funny. Tara, you better raise your hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as I, I can relate because when I went through um, a, a diagnosis myself, that it was funny because I've always been in, I was always like interested in crystals and actually my mom would bring them around all the time. My daughter had quite a collection of crystals and crystal books and all this stuff. And at that time, all of a sudden I was really diving into different alternatives and different methods. And that was one of the one, all of a sudden I had this abundance of crystals around me that <laughs> and then, and so then that that's where I really started carrying them around everywhere and putting, you know, charging the moon, like different things. But it was kind of funny because for me during my experience, it, it just all of a sudden I was like, I need some crystals for healing. And here mm -hmm. my daughter had like all <laughs> here, mom, here's books and here's this and here's that. And there's one for this and one for that. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> that is awesome. It was preparing you. It was preparing you for that, for that time. And it's so funny, um, Cindy, that you, that you talked about, I love that you brought out taking yourself out of a situation that didn't feel right for you and going to the bathroom. Cause we talked about that on the show last week, we talked about, you know, that it's not a sign of weakness to, to remove ourselves from something that we intuitively know is not good for us, especially good for our health and stuff too. So I love that you talked about that. Um, what did, what did some people close to you feel like, um, was there anybody close to you that didn't quite understand why you were going about it in the way you were going about it? And, and how did you kind of deal with that? Yeah, many people, I, I went through cancer very differently. And there were, you know, people that know me really well, 
weren't surprised about it and were supportive of it. And then other people were, um, were like, hmm, that's different. That's unusual. Like, I didn't go to any support groups because I'll just be blunt. I didn't want to sit around talking about how sick I was and how painful this was and how bad this was. Again, that was not the energy that I wanted to be in. So right from the get-go, people, so many people were like, oh my gosh, you have to go to a support group. I'm like, I'm not going to support group. I don't want to hang around with a bunch of sick people. No disrespect, but that's not the group for me. So, um, and not to just, you know, support groups. If you find that is the energy that's helpful to you, like to get it out, you know, to get out your fear and, and all of your worries and things like that, go to a support group. My message is do what is right for you, not what everybody tells you you have to do. So also kind of along the same lines, when I met with every single medical professional, and there's a ton of them that you have to meet with when you're going through cancer. Um, the first thing I said was, was I told them my mantra that this is going to be easy. And so because I wanted all of them to be in that energy. It's like, if you're not on board with that, you're not the person for me. So I met my surgeon who was a wonderful guy, great guy. And he came in for our first meeting. And of course he was super sympathetic. He was like, I know you're here because of breast cancer. I'm really sorry. And I'm like, dude, don't be sorry for me. I'm not a victim. <laughs> and so um, I said, look, you and I need to get something straight right now. Cause I'm going to be seeing a lot of you and you're going to be taking this tumor out of me. So we're going to have like a really close experience and I want you to be on board. And I said, this is my mantra. This is going to be easy. So I said, when you see me, when you look at my chart, when you write my notes, when you're in doing the surgery, I want your predominant thought to be, this is going to be easy. And the poor guy, it was so funny. I mean, he, he was actually like, you know, leaned back. He was like, oh my gosh. And, um, he paused for a moment after I said all that. And he said, you know what? I've been doing breast cancer surgery and surgery of all kind for many years. And no one has ever spoken to me like this. And he goes, I'm a hundred percent with you. And I was like, yes, yes. So I did that with all of the, um, you know, the surgeon, the radiation technicians, the nurses, everybody, the oncologist. And I'll tell you, there was one guy that I went to, um, one doctor, and I told him, you know, hey, this is, this is my mantra. And he said, it is not going to be easy. He said, you're dreaming. That's not the truth. And I deal only in the truth. This is going to be hard. This is going to be painful for you. And you need to understand that. <laughs> And I was like, see ya, bye bye. That was it. That was the one and only time I saw him. I'm like, you're not on my team, dude. You're not on my team. So I just want, if, you know, I hope none of you, you know, nobody listening to this does ever go through cancer, but just know that you're in charge and do what feels right to you and expect the best you know, expect that the people who are going to work with you can be on board if you have a different attitude like I did. I really kind of agree with everything that you're saying. A lot of people don't know this, but I have an aunt um, who went through um, a cancer situation and she's a survivor. And I took her to radiation like every day, mm -hmm. um, chemo, like ever so often and I think it's probably like multiple times a week and but moving on she went to work every day and we mm -hmm. talked like she 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 went to work every day she would go to radiation and then she would go back to work every mm -hmm. day. like nothing had happened she was losing her hair she had went on and cut it she was wearing a scarf at work because she had a hard hat on anyway so nobody would really know but she did it how she wanted to do it and yep. everybody was like, oh, you need to take off this. And she's like, no, because who's going to pay my bills? You know, mm -hmm. she was just like, I can work. I can beat this. I can do this. And she's better. Her hair is longer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not to say it's a sad thing, but like in the time that I've been growing my hair and she has cut hers, it has grown longer than mine. So <laughs> I really, I really appreciate you sharing that because you can do it your way. 
you don't have to like just fall into whatever someone else tells you, whatever someone, because in the moment, to be honest, you know what's best for you. Right. right? I agree 100%, 100%. And our society and our culture is so, um, I think deep into cancer is a certain way. And if you have cancer, this is what you are going to experience. It's going to be bad. It's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. It's going to be the worst experience of your life. And I'm here to say, no, it's not. It doesn't have to be. You can choose to make it something else. And it can be easy. Yeah, it all goes back to choice, which Jessica and I talk a lot about week after week after week is our choices and making choices. Um, and so I love that. And I loved your mantra. I actually wrote it down. It was going to be easy. I'm going to put that somewhere on my wall. <laughs> I'd like to share you. another quick mantra, too, for people yeah, who might. That's what I'm just going to say. Look, you're reading my mind. <laughs> I'm very intuitive, as, yeah. as Jessica knows. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so there's another mantra and this one, I, the, this is going to be easy. Like I said, was my main one. And I actually um, put that on my calendar every day, multiple times a day. I had it as an event. So it would just pop up at certain times during the day. And every time it did, I was either saying it out loud or in my head, this is going to be easy. But another one that I also just used all the time was uh, this and this is kind of a long one. I love knowing that I'm in the process of attracting all the people, resources, information, and support that I need to have an easy and successful cancer treatment. I know that's kind of long, but I had that one in my phone too popping up because that just kind of covered it all. It's like, yeah, I'm attracting everything I need. I'm attracting the right people, the right information, the right resources and support. Everything I need is coming to make this easy and successful. And it was. My cancer experience was easy. Mm -hmm. I, I, this is, I mean, just... That we have we have these shows every once in a while <laughs> that we try to pick out little golden nuggets, but the whole thing is just covered in gold. It's, it's perfection, Cindy. And wow. I'm so, I mean, just so many people, again, I can't reiterate enough. If you have not shared this out, please share it out because cancer is something that it, it's, it's to the point now where everybody either is someone or knows someone. And it's, and it's, it's a very, very, um, it's, it's a, it's hard, it's a hard realization when you realize how many people are affected by this. And, and um, I would love for you to finish off your time with us today. If there's somebody watching who feels like who maybe this is them or someone that they know is going through this and they feel like they, they just don't know what to do. They, they're, they're not able to speak up for themselves to their doctors or they feel discouraged. They feel like um, they, they just can't find the positive here. They just, they, 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 they can't wrap their head around this. What's, what's something you could leave them with today, Cindy? What I wanna say is that as humans, our most powerful tool is our brain and we're so lucky to have it. And our brain and our thoughts really can change our experience. So if you're in a cancer situation right now and you're having a rough time of it, just know that your circumstance having cancer is, is neutral. It's just a circumstance. But what you think about that circumstance is everything. So if you think that it's going to be difficult and terrible, your suffering will likely go deeper. But if you try to find even the small ways that, hey, this isn't so bad. Hey, I, I have a nurse that's really, really kind and helpful to me. That makes it easier. Or I have a doctor that is on board with, my attitude, and, and that makes this experience easier. Look for the ways that you can, in your head, identify 
what's easy about this experience? What's positive about this experience? Because the more you tell your brain, that's what I want to see, the more you will actually see it. And you can do it. You can get through it. Oh my gosh. So many, so many good things. Um, Cindy, thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, I, like I said, I was moved um, from the, the first time that I met you. Um, I was really in a space of still trying to uh, navigate how I really felt about my brother's passing from cancer and, um, and, and hearing your story and, and positivity just reminded me of so many things about him and, and uh, helped me to process his death and kind of, and things that were going on in my life as well. So I'm just, I'm so thankful to you and everybody else who comes on this show, just to hold space for everybody and what, and what they're going to through. And I would love to just, this is totally just out of left field, I guess, but I would love to just take a minute for all of us. I always, anytime I'm sending peace out there, I, I see like a big Care Bear stare. You guys like the Care Bear stare with the rainbows going out and everything. I would love to just take a minute, just 30 seconds, and everybody just kind of send that peace out there to everybody who is dealing with cancer, whether in their own life or with somebody that they love, somebody that they know. And just have a moment of just sending them peace, because I think it's so important that we just come together and, and have this moment of just taking a breath. I love it. I hope wherever you are right now, if, if cancer is something or even any other serious illness is something that has affected you in your life, that you are feeling a sense of peace with us right now. Um, Cindy, thank you again for being here today and sharing your story. We so appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it. It was great to spend time with all of you. All right, Cindy, we will see you next time. And we are going to move into our round table discussion. Um, I, I'm just not even gonna lie. I had, a, I had to fight the tears all the time and be like, listen, I have mascara on today. <laughs> I did the same thing. I would buy her Cindy's book. I would buy her book. I would tell her book. I would get it to the people. <laughs> Jamal's gonna sell it on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, but oh you know, she had such a positive mindset through the whole process. And I think that is so key when you're dealing with any anything in life in general, but but especially when, when you're dealing with cancer to A to find that mindset, you know, after that after that big C word comes gets thrown at you, to find that mindset and then to actually be able to practice it and keep it going day after day after day is, is just phenomenal and amazing and she's just so um you can just feel the energy of positiveness just coming off of her and just radiates um radiates through the whole show and so that that was really that i think is what kept the tears coming and i kept going i got a mascara and i can't run my mascara <laughs> well, I feel like the law of attraction is a creature of habit so it's mm -hmm. like the more you say, I'm going to beat this, the more you're going to feel like you're going to beat this and you're going right. to attract the situation that's going to help you feel like you're going to beat this and you're going to just continue to beat this. Just like, you know, this emotional moment we're having, we just keep attracting more moments we want to cry. Right. And the other thing too is, um, it's fake it till you make it. And I think that people go, I'm not getting the positive, I'm not getting the positive, so I'm just going to go back to what I think works. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I always tell my clients, fake it till you make it. If you're not feeling into it, keep going because eventually your mind is going to, it's going to catch up with everything else and you are going to, going to be able to, to move forward. And, but you're right, Jamad, it is all about practice, practice, practice. And in the beginning, I think we need to practice a lot, you know. It's, it's not something that, um, you know, the, the whole, I, I think when she was talking about um, being in the car, and having that ugly cry for 30 minutes and then being like, okay, I'm going to do something about this. That is not something that is easily grasped 
by a lot of people. Right. Um, and, and I love how this kind of ties into last week and what she was also talking about, about going in the bathroom. Not everybody is going to understand, um, you know, the choices that we make in, in that moment, but we have to do what feels really, really good for us to do. And I think that there, there probably is a lot of people that are going to watch this show or that are watching right now that are going to be like 30 minutes, like it's been 30 days or, or however long it's been. And I'm still stuck here. You have a choice of how long you want to be stuck there. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, I, I'll tell just a very, very brief story. A couple years ago, I had had, um, I had an x-ray done that the technician um, got part of the x-ray in a, in a spot of my body that wasn't necessarily supposed to be part of this x-ray and they thought they saw something. Um, and I was told at the time that I probably had a tumor and it was interesting because I had to go through this process of they wanted me to get MRIs and they wanted me to go and you didn't tell somebody that's claustrophobic, they need to get in an MRI machine. I'm like, eh, no, <laughs> um, but, but when, when all of that stuff fell through the M getting the MRI, we couldn't get the approval from the insurance and all of this other stuff fell through. I made a choice that I was just going to, whatever was there, whatever they thought they saw, whatever that I'm just going to roll with it that mm -hmm. I'm and And so that's been a couple of years now. And I've been, cha I've changed my diet. I've, I've followed whatever my intuition has told me to do is what I have followed. And that's not something that people have understood. They're mm -hmm. like, why didn't you push harder for the MRI? Why didn't you go see this doctor or this doctor? And because that's not what has felt right for me to do. Mm -hmm. And then I get the, well, you have six kids and you have, it's not what I felt like it was right to do. So I've been going through every day, just doing the best that I can and following what my intuition tells me to do. Because on the flip side of that, I watched my brother who had way more guts than I ever had, mm -hmm. who, who never took anything from anybody, just do and everything that everybody wanted him to do. And, and then he was gone. Mm -hmm. And instead of what I feel like really following his intuition with what felt right, he just did what, what he, he thought was everybody wanted him to do. And, and I watched the other side of that. And so it's, 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 do what feels right for you. And I love that Cindy, that Cindy brought that up and not everybody's going to understand if you are blessing yourself with crystals in the bathroom or whatever you're doing. Um, and I, and I also want to point out that originally Tara wasn't going to be on the show, but I asked her specifically to be on this show today because I knew that she went through an experience as well. Um, so I would love to hear how the story resonated with you too, Tara. Actually, it resonated with me quite a bit because um, I probably did the, I did the, almost the exact same thing. I had uh, a freak out. It was, it was like throughout that entire evening, it was like crying and then I'm okay, I got this. And then what the heck is going on? And, okay, I got this. And it kind of just cycled <laughs> throughout the night. And then for me, it was the next day. Yeah, it was all of a sudden I got on the phone with my uh, BFF she's an acupuncturist and I was like what do I do and and it just at that point things and the information and the right people started to come my way and I can totally relate to protecting your energy because at that time I didn't want to tell anybody what was going on I just was like this is my experience I wanted to keep it to myself and perhaps my lovely mom just slipped a little because you know she needed that support right but at that time I'm like what are you doing I don't want everybody's negative energy I just want to focus on my own and, and, and I, I use the term negative energy not that others would have negative energy but even just that sympathetic kind of like oh you're you know I, I just didn't want to be in that energetic space I wanted to stay in a space of you know like she had her mantra this is going to be easy or I got this. This is no big deal. A solution's on its way using those kinds of things. And, um, and then, and being proactive, I think then for me was the next thing in educating myself and again, doing what was right. So, mm -hmm. and, and I, again, the law of attraction, the right people, the right information, books, documentaries, things just came in my way 
that allowed me to keep my mindset focused and moving forward and in the right space. So mm-hmm. not to say I didn't have other freakouts along the way. It happened here and there, but at least those tools that you have can bring you back. And yeah, I had, I, I left my crystals too. <laughs> yeah, and that's, the key. that's the key too is have the, have the meltdowns. You have to have those because we have to, we have to be able to work that emotion through our bodies. Mm-hmm. But know that that on the other side of that emotion, you've got to come out and get into the positive state too. And I love the fact that um, that you wanted everything positive around you, because um, I think that that is very very key to our own mindset. Is if everybody around us is mindset is is positive, then it makes it easier for us to stay positive too. So I like that. Yeah, all of so this, I could totally relate. Yeah. <laughs> all of this reminds me of when they tell the story of how Louise Hayes had found out she was diagnosed with cancer. Mm-hmm. And she was like freaking out. She was like, and I would feel the same way if people are saying I've helped them heal their lives and change everything through the power of thought and affirmation. And I come down with, can- you know, cancer. I'm like, what kind of thoughts have I been thinking? You know? <laughs> Right, but her, but her, but her mentor was just like Louise. You did not heal all these people to die for cancer. Die from cancer. Sometimes we manifest things. Sometimes we wish for things that we, and it's gonna play out differently. You know. Mm-hmm. So maybe when we get put in certain situations that are drastically life changing, we can say, okay, why is this happening for me? You know. Mm-hmm. Like in that moment, Louise saw like, okay, this is my time to practice what I preach. And then like she had beat the cancer, did a movie, lived for years longer, you know? So it was really, it's really rich that sometimes that we can shift it. Cause I like how she pivoted. She was like, the best feeling thing she could reach for after her breakdown was a mantra. This is going to be easy. I'm done. This is... I think the best episodes are every first Friday, just so everybody knows. <laughs> on first Friday. Of every month. <laughs> it, it has been um, a really good show. And, and, I, and I just want to say to anybody out there who, um, who feels like, you know, this is going to be easy is a stretch for them right now. I, and I think all of us have been there where we have felt like, look, easy. Are you kidding me? This is, that's going to be a little bit of a stretch, but you can like, like Tara said, um, you know, she used a mantra where she said it's on, it's on the way. And, um, Cindy used a mantra that said in the process of you can put those words in there in those mantras to make them feel good for you in the moment to make it feel believable for you in the moment because Jamad will tell you that's the key. That's the key right there is you have to believe what you are saying in order for them to work for you. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to understand that I have to point out really quickly so we have a chat. We have a Facebook chat with all of our panelists and hosts of the show. And Heather, that's been watching one of our panelists, she posted um, a picture in there of her lock screen on her phone that she just made. You see what that? This is going to be easy. <laughs> this is going to be easy. So everybody needs to do that right now. Let's end the show today. Everybody put in the comments below, this is going to be easy. Say that today. And we thank Cindy so much for giving us that mantra because we're just going to, we're going to manifest that, that everything's going to be easy for us today. We're getting lots of mantras from yeah. different people. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, t-shirts are coming. Watch out season two, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have come to the end of the show and I want to thank Cindy Tro so much. And of course, the panelists, the empowerment coach, Jamad Kelly, and our Juicy Living by Design specialist, Tara Abram. And I also want to thank all of you for being here with us, whether you've been live or on the replay. I encourage you again, share, share, share this episode. um, And also continue leaving comments and questions on the video so that we can continue the party after the show. And be sure to check out all of the the links in the description as well of each video when we come on every week in the description of the video there are links to donna myself jamad 
Tara, Lori, Heather, and of course our fabulous guests like Cindy today. Um, and make sure you check everybody out on their websites and social media because everybody that's on this show just has so much goodness to offer if you need that positive, um, those positive vibes in your life. So until next week, my name is Jessica Dugas, intuitive mentor and energy healer. And I'm Donna Brown, holistic wellness practitioner, and this has been The Breakthrough. Join us next week when we will be joined by our amazing and talented panelists, Ms. Heather Clark, as we were just discussing her, and Lori Ann Davis, the relationship coach, along with our guest, Crystal Cockerham, when she'll be sharing her breakthrough moment of coming home. We look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same place, 12 p.m. Central Time, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you next time. Bye for now. Bye, everybody.